Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Got a very special guest on today's podcast as we're going to talk about pretty much everything Razorbacks with one of the best in the business that does it. And it's Andrew Hutchinson of hogbeat.com. You can also follow him on Twitter at NWA Hutch. Hutch, appreciate you joining us, man. I know it's a pretty busy time for all of us, but especially for you between football, bowl season, basketball, recruiting, all that fun stuff. You guys are keeping it busy over there at Hogbeat. Yeah, thanks for having me on, John. And it is a, a very, very busy time. All those things you mentioned, plus I've got a couple of weddings to go to this month. And uh, yeah, it's just one thing after another. I, I it's, it's, it's a busy, busy time. You throw in the holiday in there. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful time of the year. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and it's kind of enjoyable, too, because I know that, like, uh, you know, I, I've talked about this with a lot of different people and uh, other guests that I've had on this podcast, too. But like you kind of like me where you grew up in Arkansas and then we kind of came in together as far as the same class of Arkansas media, roughly around there. And it's funny because I feel like both of us started kind of when the beginning of that dead period of Razorback football did, you know, like uh, right after the Petrino era but kind of in the beginning of Bielema when things were rough and not to say that it was all horrible, but it definitely wasn't good. And it's just kind of crazy to think that now here we are sitting where we're covering Arkansas, who's eight and four, four and four in conference play has a chance for nine wins there, which would be their best finish since 2011. And it's just like, I'm sure you've seen it on your message boards and with all your subscribers too. the excitement levels at an all time high. And it's just so much fun to, have it and to be a part of it and to be able to actually have a football program that not only is you know good to watch on the field but also has Razorback fans excited for the first time in a long time too. No, you're exactly right. I mean, my my freshman year writing for the Arkansas Traveler at the U of A was the 2012 season. So uh, my my the second press conference I ever covered was the infamous John L. Smith smile press conference. So uh, yeah, I to say I came in right whenever things were bad would be an understatement. So uh, this has been a really fun season to cover because of that. You know, I've been had, I've had to pay attention to the AP poll every week whenever it comes out. And uh, now to, to, to go get to cover a bowl game in Florida. I mean, the, the last time they played a bowl game in Florida, I was in seventh grade. So uh, this <laughs> this is a, a, a really fun deal for me just to get to, to be around it. I mean, I've, I've gotten to cover some cool stuff with baseball and basketball, but to be able to do it with with football, I mean, I mean, this is the, you know this. I mean, this is the sport in Arkansas. This is a sport everyone cares about, and and so to to have that going uh, is awesome. And I know our 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 message board and, and fans on social media they're excited as well. And I'm just I'm just really looking forward to to getting down and experiencing Tampa and then going to the Outback Bowl. And, and as Sam Pittman said the other day, uh, enjoying a blooming onion. Yeah, same here. And I don't know if like I I think I've had a blooming onion once, maybe. I didn't go to Outback a lot as a kid, but oh I, I know goodness. you're from Springdale, so you probably did because <laughs> it was right up there, like on the border of Fayetteville, Springdale. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, th- th- it's enjoyable and it's funny because uh, obviously you know we've talked a lot about the season and the success that it's been, but I, I, something that I know that you've kind of been on top of too is, and I think it's curious that a lot of people have at least been asking me about, and I'm sure the same with you is like players who may opt out players that may be transferring out all that um i saw that the uh of course what's his name Vito. what's the, what's how you say his last name the Vito calvaruso calvaruso yes he uh, i saw he entered the transfer portal which i was bummed i'm like man it's kind of nice having an automatic touchback every single time so uh but but seeing that and uh you know seeing some other players what's kind of first off what's the like why is he transferring now do you know anything more about it because i thought like hey he's doing pretty good and also like uh, what's the latest update on any possible players uh, that you know of that could transfer, might transfer, opting out? Any any guy, any guy that's not going to be available for the bowl game? Yeah, Vito. You know, I'd heard rumblings about it throughout the season that he was going to maybe transfer. But and the thing I was always told, and it makes sense, is that he wants to go somewhere where he can also kick field goals, and he's not going to get that opportunity at Arkansas because Cam Little is uh, quite the kicker himself, and as a true freshman, so. 
Uh, yes, he was automatic as a touchback guy. You know, Pro Football Focus actually has him graded out as the number one kickoff specialist in college football. So he was very, very good, not just booting it through the end zone, but getting hang time and, and all those technical aspects of it. Uh, so that, that, that is kind of a bummer, but I mean, he's only the third guy that's transferred. The other two, you know, not hardly ever played Josh Oglesby and, and Solomon Wright, you know, those guys are, are leaving to get an opportunity to play somewhere. Uh, so not, not too, uh, much of a, a hurt on Arkansas. Uh, but as far as that, uh, others, I mean, I think everyone else is pretty much going to be available. I mean, I know the one everyone wants to talk about is Traylon Burks, the star wide receiver, uh, but just knowing everything I know about him and you know how his his kind of personality is, he just likes to play football and, and he loves his team. He loves his teammates, and I think he's going to go out there and play. And you know, then we got to wait to decide. You know, here if he does in fact declare for the NFL draft, like what you know most experts think are going to happen. But you know, with with a guy like him, he's he's just kind of a, an odd dude. I mean, he's a guy that probably coming out of high school should have been like a five-star recruit. The only problem was is he doesn't care about that stuff. He would rather go hunting and fishing than show up at camps and, and try to get out in front of, you know, rivals and 24 seven sports and, and guys like that, or even college coaches. And he was just like, Hey, you know, watch my film. And if you like it, you know, offer me. Uh, so he's a, he's an interesting cat and uh, going to be interested to see what he decides to do. Uh, but I do fully anticipate him playing in the bowl game. And, you know, I think everyone else that are your main guys, you know, they should they should be healthy. You know, Sam Pittman said they're they're pretty healthy right now. Uh, and he doesn't anticipate any opt-outs. Uh, now, the, now the question is, are there going to be opt-outs on the Penn State side? And, and that might happen based on kind of just what I'm hearing. Nothing super solid, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's a couple on, on their side. Yeah, because Traylon Burks – like I have 0% chance of him coming back. Like, I, I mean, maybe that's too low. Cause I guess you can never say never, but like if he decided to come back for another year, I don't think there'd be another player that I've been more floored by returning who was a surefire. Like, cause I mean, we've seen guys that have come back that may have gotten drafted or may have gotten, you know, like a second or third round, something like that. But to me, like Traylon Burks is just a bona fide first round pick. And I just don't know any other player in any other sport that could compare that to if he decided to come back. And that's why I just like, I just like, but I mean, you get, you lay it out and say, Hey, he's kind of different. You know, he doesn't really care about that stuff. He just, he loves Arkansas. He loves playing football for the Razorbacks. He loves his team and stuff. So maybe it's a little different, but I just see, I, I, if he comes back, I'll almost be like, no, Traylon, you, you need to go. Like <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to be here at Arkansas. Like, is there, do you like, what percentage would you put on it? as far as him returning to Arkansas next year? Oh, man, it's hard to put a number on it. Uh, I would say it's higher than zero. Uh, but, again, with him being almost a surefire first-round pick, I mean, that's a lot of money you're leaving on the table. Uh, he does have somewhat of a, a an injury history here. You know, he's battled some nagging stuff, you know, throughout the season. I don't think that's much of a secret. Uh, so I would I – would, be shocked if he comes back but you know who knows in this new day and age of nil so maybe someone could secure him a, a nice little bag and uh maybe that'll be enough for him to, to come back and you know play for play for foot uh for the razorbacks and you know still be where he can go hunting and fishing and all that i mean he could do that in the nfl as well but uh i don't know i mean just just his personality the way he talks and everything uh, makes me think it's maybe more likely than say you know your average first round draft pick kind of guy. So, but again, I, I don't I don't think Arkansas fans should get their hopes up necessarily. Uh, but you, you know maybe just you know let it be a surprise and and you know freak out if if it does happen. But you know I don't want you to be disappointed if he does go pro because that's what everyone expects. I want to remind everybody that Locked On Razorbacks is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's the daily fantasy made easy. It's the leader in college sports daily fantasy. Any prop you can think of, from yardage to touchdowns, even interceptions thrown, and a great deal for all you college fanatics out there. That if you go 
to prizepicks.com. You can use the promo code locked on and get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. You can use the award winning app on the App Store or on Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. So don't hesitate and check out prizepicks.com and use promo code locked on or go to your App Store and download the app today. Prize Picks, the daily fantasy made easy. All right, Andrew. Now we've talked about players that could be opting out or players that could be uh, declaring for the NFL draft. What about players that could come back that may not come back, if that makes sense? Like the ones that could be seniors that could use that COVID year to return? Because it seems like, at least with Sam Pittman in some of his press conference, Bumper Pool may have been one of those players that's been referred to as a possibility. Uh, we know that Sam Pittman obviously is going to be recruiting uh, not only outside of his team, but inside of his team to try to get some of these guys back. But uh, do you anticipate any of these players coming back, especially the key players like a bumper pool, like a Monteric Brown, like any of these guys? Yeah, so there's nine true seniors that could come back and use that you know, super senior season like we saw with Grant Morgan, Hayden Henry, uh, Myron Cunningham, guys like that. Uh, it's It's a little bit different than last year because last year, uh, you could bring all of them back and it not count against your 85-man limit. So you could bring back a guy like Deion Edwards, who is only going to play special teams and not really contribute much defensively. Uh, you got to be a little bit more selective this year because when they do, if they do come back, they do count toward that 85. Uh, so it's a little bit more of a tricky situation, but they do want you know some guys. You mentioned Bumper Pool, Monteric Brown, John Ridgeway is another one that could potentially come back. Uh, Dalton Wagner's actually already basically announced he's coming back. And and how about him signing an NIL deal with uh, WWE? Yeah. I mean, that, what a match made in heaven for that. Uh, so that that's cool. He's coming back. He's a, you know, your starting right tackle uh, who is probably better than fans like to give him credit for because, you know, they all they always just see the false start penalties that he's had. And, you know, he had three of them in the Georgia game. And ever since then, everyone says, oh, well, he sucks. Well, he's actually been pretty decent this year and, and vastly improved in my opinion. And maybe another extra year when, you know, in the system and everything like that, maybe he's even better. Uh, but obviously I'd say the number one recruit for Arkansas, I think, you know, high school transfer or within the own t your, your own team is probably bumper pool because look at that linebacker group. If he leaves, who in the world is going to play for you? I mean, you, you're losing Morgan, you're losing Henry because they're super seniors already. Then you, if you lose pool, I mean, you got Andrew Parker, who's played a handful of snaps this year. You've got, you know, Pooh Paul, the, the true freshman. He's played a handful of snaps. Uh, Jackson Woodard's a walk-on. He's played a little bit. But that's, that's it. I mean, then you've got some, you know, you got some good recruits coming in. You know, Jordan Crook comes to mind. Manny Powell, he's coming off of an ACL. These are, are guys that are going to be true freshmen, and it's hard to play as true freshmen in the SEC, unless you're just a, you know, generational talent, especially at the linebacker spot. Uh, but you got to have bump. If you get bumper pull back, then, then I feel pretty good about like that defense. Uh, you know, Monteric Brown, he could come back. He would be another big one. I mean, five interceptions this year tied for the SEC lead. Uh, but I could see him deciding, Hey, I've been here five years already. I'm going to go try to, you know, my hand at the NFL and, and strike while iron's hot. Uh, I could see that happening. Uh, you know, John Ridgeway would be massive because, again, you don't have a ton of, of depth on that defensive line. Uh, so that would be another big one. Uh, I think those are the main ones, uh, if I if I just had to guess. Well, what, what can you tell us about Jaden Hazelwood, this new transfer from Oklahoma that's got everybody excited for all the right reasons because he's a former five-star. He's like the number four player in the country of the 2019 class. It's like, you know, I've seen all these numbers as far as how, you know, how high he's ranked in history of Arkansas recruits that's made it on campus. You know, people are talking about like him and Ryan Mallett. Like those are like the top players to ever arrive. Like that's a lot of expectation that goes along with it too. So like what can you tell us about him? Is he actually a player that can here at Arkansas live up to that expectation? Because I'm telling you right now, and this is assuming that Traylon Burks leaves, next year everyone's going to be like, all right, you're the guy. You have to replace Traylon Burks. You have to replace that productivity because uh, we're going to need you. Like, is he that caliber, that capable of a player? Is he Traylon Burks level? I'm not ready to go that far yet. I mean, because I think he's just truly special and and ranks up there with Darren McFadden in terms of you know best players of our generation. Uh, but 
could he be that guy? Could he be a go-to guy? I think so. I mean, there's a reason he was ranked so highly coming out of high school and, you know, he's going to have that comfort, you know, that uh, of being able to play with his old high school coach, Jimmy Smith. Obviously, he's the running backs coach, so he's not going to be his position coach, but still, he's going to have that comfort. Uh, and plus, you've got a guy named K.J. Jefferson throwing you the ball, and uh, he has proven to be a, a very good quarterback, both passing and running. Uh, so uh, I think he could be a guy, especially when you look at who else your other options are. I mean, could it be a Warren Thompson? I mean, he was a heralded top 100 recruit. Uh, he's shown flashes, but he also had some critical drop passes. Uh, you've got, you know, Keetron Jackson. He's a true freshman, highly regarded guy, but he's only caught like five or six passes this year. Uh, beyond that, I mean, you know, maybe you could do it in Isaiah Satinia or Quincy McAdoo. A couple of guys are coming in as true freshmen, you know, a more hi- highly regarded guys. Uh, but Hazelwood just makes the most sense. I mean, he, he did produce at Oklahoma, maybe not at the level you would expect from a number one wide receiver recruit, uh, but he did, he did play well. And plus, you know, he was hampered by injury last year. Uh, this year, Oklahoma had all the, the quarterback controversy and some inconsistencies there that probably contributed to him not having you know even better numbers than he did. Uh, but if you're asking him to come in and be the guy unquestioned, uh, I think he could, he could produce. Uh, but I would caution people to say Traylon Burks is Traylon Burks. I mean, we're, we're not going to see too many of him uh, playing in college football anywhere. So maybe tamper your expectations from that regard. Uh, but I do think there's still a lot to be excited about. He could be that number one guy. BetOnline.ag has you covered for all season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues to march right here into the postseason. BetOnline remains your number one spot for all sports action this season. So head to the new updated desktop or mobile website and sign up today to receive 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code Locked On. To receive that bonus from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers for the 2021 season. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. So head over to BetOnline.ag where the game starts. Also, we're brought to you by BuiltBar.com. Listen, Built Bar is where it's at because it's healthy, it's convenient, it tastes amazing. And for the holidays, they're going to be coming out with some amazing new flavors that you'll have to try. And it's the best of both worlds where you get delicious and healthy. You're going to be packing on those pounds during the holiday season. No better way to be able to handle and maintain that with Built Bar. They give you that extra fuel that you need, and it's perfect for on the go because it's so convenient. Whether it's before work, after a workout, whatever it may be, Built Bar has you covered. And if you go to Built.com right now and use promo code LOCK15, You'll get 15% off your next order. Doesn't matter how many you buy. Doesn't matter if you buy the entire store. As long as you put in that promo code LOCKED15, you'll get 15% off your order at Built.com. So be sure to check it out with all their new flavors. Again, Built.com for 15% off. Use promo code LOCKED15. All right, Hutch. Now, shifting from football to basketball, which uh, I was at the game. I think I'm sure you were at the game last night, too, against Charlotte. Uh, You know, Arkansas won. They're continuing to be undefeated, and it's weird because I feel that even though they're undefeated and they've been winning all these games, and most of the games they've won by at least double digits. In the case last night, they won by 20, but it's still like, I don't know. I, it's hard to describe where it's like you're you're undefeated, so you can't, you know, you are what your record says you are, but like fans and then myself, it's got to start thinking, I'm like, okay, how good is this team? Like, are they good? Are they just beating bad teams? But yet I got to give them credit because they're winning the games. And you see other teams around the country that are supposed to be good. Like what Florida did the other night where it's like, they just weren't loose to like one of the worst teams in D one. So it's like, I don't know. I'm in this conundrum where it's like, I'll have to wait and see, even though they've played like already their entire non-conference schedule, I still don't know exactly how good they are. Yeah, it's quite the conundrum because I feel the exact same way. They, they haven't played the best non-conference schedule. I mean, Kansas State's not supposed to be very good in the Big 12, but it is a Big 12 team. And Cincinnati is, you know, a decent ball club, and they were able to win both of those games. And uh, so that's got to count for something. And uh, these other non-conference games, you mentioned they, they've won most of them by double digits or, you know, by quite large margins. Uh but it hasn't always been the most aesthetically pleasing basketball. Uh, They aren't shooting the ball well. 
uh, especially from beyond the arc. I mean, they're just absolutely abysmal. They were coming into the, the Charlotte game, they were 314th, and then they went 3 of 13, and so they're going to drop even further than that out of 358 teams. Just truly, truly terrible. And it's baffling because on paper, you would think this would be a really good shooting team because these players that they have – have a proven track record of shooting well and, and making three pointers, and it just hasn't happened. Uh, and plus, there's been times where the offense just kind of just does they they turn it over. It just doesn't. It looks clunky, I guess I could say. And I mean, part of that's because they don't have a true point guard. It seems like you know they're trying three different guys to try to hopefully one of them will emerge. I mean, Devo Davis has come on strong the last few games. Uh, he set career highs and assists the last two games. Uh, with eight and seven, uh, Chris Likes has played at some. JD Note has played at some, but I mean those guys are, you know, especially Likes and, and Note. Those are score first uh, point guards. I mean they they want to go get their buckets. Uh, and you know Devo could maybe be a little bit different, but he also likes to score. Uh, just a little bit different of a style, you know, more in transition, the flow of things, kind of thing. So it is really a weird nine and zero start because they aren't, you know, that. Dominant. I mean, you just look at the the net rankings that came out earlier this week. The first rankings came out, and Arkansas is one of twelve undefeated teams. They're the eleventh out of twelve in the net. You know, ahead of I want to say like Weber State or something like that. So uh, it's very weird. Uh, and you you gotta you gotta hope that this team is gonna be one that continues to gel, continues to mesh, and then we'll we'll take it up a notch once you get in SEC play because. Just looking across the league, I mean, you'll take out that atrocious Florida loss you mentioned, but the SEC looks pretty good, and, and it's going to be competitive, especially you know the top half of that conference. So uh, you got to hope you can flip a flip a switch there, because if not, uh, it it could be an uphill battle for Arkansas because they haven't picked up any like marquee wins. I think the Cincinnati game might be a Q one win, uh, and that that's going to be a big deal come come March, whenever it's selection time, because you want to be able to be a you know, say a, a four or five seed compared to an eight or nine seed. And uh, that that's what you do uh, in, in non-conference play. Well, yeah. And you, and you brought it up the three point shooting, like, like last night, just looking at warmups and I know it's warmups, but it's like, they're nailing threes like crazy. It's like, you know, if you just took what they do before the game and just their warm up shots, it's like, wow, you got six guys on this team that can hit threes pretty consistently. But in the game, it's like I can I can count on Arkansas to go three for something. It seems like every game they they go three for 17, three for 14, three for 10. Like it's always just three. So I guess maybe that's the number, magic number you need to get to. But like this, I feel like it's a fixable thing. But like, what do you do? Like, like if you're a muscle man, is it because obviously, you know what you see in practice and you know what these guys are capable of. What's the key to fixing that? Because as good as Arkansas is in other regards, like rebounding and defense and steals and like all that, the, the, not because not only three points, you free throws haven't been that great either. So it's like, what's, how do you fix that? Is it just something you got to work through and something is it a mental thing? Like, how do you make sure that's fixed? Because come conference play, you're going to have to hit threes, especially on the road if you want to win the, win these games. Yeah, Eric Musselman was talking about it after the game, and, and he's mentioned this before, that the, the, the threes that they're taking are contributing to that such a, a low percentage. Uh, he said they got to eliminate the, the off-the-dribble threes. Uh, it needs to be more of like in the flow of things uh, where, you know, and we've seen it a little bit, you know, like Adis Tony, I think he's three of five from three this year, so he's shooting 60%. And all of his have been, you know, catch and shoot, you know, kind of in the flow of things. Uh, you know, there was a one of the threes uh, last night uh, came in a, a transition where I think Note passed it to Devo, who kicked it out to the corner, and Likes knocked it down. Uh, it was just, you know, in the flow of things. And I think that will help. Um, but also, you've got to make sure you're not – got to eliminate all the heat check threes. You know, J.D. Note seems like he's good for one of those at least every game. Uh, and, and you live with that because he plays incredible defense. So I don't think he gets enough credit for that. And plus he's fantastic at attacking the basket and finishing and drawing fouls. Uh, so very good overall player. But, you know, if he's going to go one of six from three-point range, 
that's not exactly really good. And, and he is in a massive slump. I think now it's like seven games now after, after starting off the season hot, shooting over 40% in the first two games, he's shooting. I don't even know if he's shooting 20% the last seven games and that, and when you're shooting at such a high volume as him, uh, that's going to bring down your, your overall team percentage as well. So I think shot selection and just, the, the way they're shooting the threes has to change in order to you know increase that percentage. Yeah, because it's it's worrisome. And I think that that's probably what's contributing to at least my and others and, and as far as Razorback fans concerns is like if they were shooting the ball just a little above average, I think that they would be blowing these teams out by, by a wider margin. They would be like people would feel a lot more confident that this team's able to get it done. But I guess how I look at it is I'm, I'm going to go ahead and bank on. They're not going to get worse at shooting. Like they, they either stay the same or they get better. Like I don't think they're going to get worse at shooting, hopefully. So if that's the case and I'm like, all right, well, if this is the worst they're going to be as a team, as a shooting team or whatnot, then, and you're still winning all these games to me, that's like the the best thing that could happen. And, and even say if they beat Oklahoma this Saturday, which, you know, is going to be a, a good test there in Tulsa. But if they're able to beat Oklahoma, that's like one of those nice wins that kind of like what happened with Cincinnati, where it's like it kind of brings people back and be like, OK, we are a good team. You know, we, we, we are good right there. But I don't know. I just feel like if this is the worst they're going to be, then they're going to be fine come conference play because I just see them getting better. They got better last year as the season went on. Uh, they got better in the first year under Eric Musselman. I don't see why this year won't be any different. Yeah, and I mean, even if they don't get better, they're learning now how to play and win games, even when they are shooting like crap. I mean, I, that was one of my biggest takeaways from that Kansas City tournament when they beat Kansas State and, and Cincinnati is they won those games despite just horrible shooting. Uh, and so to, to learn that now, you know, we've seen teams in the past that live and die by the three and that's that's not gonna that's not gonna get it done, especially come tournament time. I mean, you know, when they go in these you know big arenas, and especially later on in the tournament where they're playing in football stadiums, you know, teams don't shoot very well from three. So if Arkansas already doesn't shoot well, then they're gonna know how to to adjust and, and play, and it's not gonna really bother them because it's like, oh well, it's just another bad shooting night for us. <laughs> uh, so I. I I think that that would be maybe just, you know, to look at, you know, glass half full. Uh, but, yeah, you would like to see them shoot it better. I mean, maybe somebody like a Jackson Robinson comes on strong, you know, in SEC play kind of like, you know, Devo and, and Jalen Williams did last year. Maybe he's a guy that can come on strong and provide that that shooting. But even he, as, as pretty of a shot as he has, he only has made a handful of them and is shooting a pretty low percentage himself. It's It really is baffling because some of these guys – just you know you watch them as you said warm-ups you watch them you know at their previous stops and they make these shots and they just they just aren't falling right now for whatever reason all right hutch before i let you get out of here i think most people are always interested in recruiting and we know that the early signing day is coming up soon which is just i still think it's so funny because it's like a remember signing day was such a big deal in february you know back in the day and now it's still a big deal, but I don't know. It just, I guess, doesn't have the same luster behind it. But people are really wondering about football side of things. And it's like, okay, you got some transfer, you got transfers coming in. Everyone's excited about uh, the recruiting class looks pretty good right now. Obviously still got some work to do, but just looking into your own little crystal ball, how do you feel like this raise your back recruiting class for football, at least in the 2022 class shapes up and where does it rank? How, is it going to be better than last year? Just what's your overall take right now? Yeah, so right now I think they're sitting on rivals at number 12 in the country, which is phenomenal. Uh, however, uh, we're still a week out from that early signing period. There's a lot of big-time recruits out there that haven't made their announcements. You know, there's teams that Arkansas is ahead. Like Arkansas is ahead of Clemson right now in the recruiting rankings. That's probably not going to hold up. Uh, I think they only have like 11 or 12 commitments or whatever, uh, and Arkansas is just barely ahead of them. So. We're, we're going to see some teams move ahead of them, but I do think their position where they could maybe finish top 20, which I think for Arkansas, finishing top 20 is incredible. Uh, top 25 should be kind of the goal, uh, and top 30 is usually, okay, that's to be expected. Anything lower than that, that's when people freak out and hit the panic button. But uh, the class is, really looks pretty good, especially at the top of it. I, I wrote this the other day, you know, our uh, rivals really uh, uh, the updated – 
2022 rivals 250, so the top 250 prospects. Arkansas has five commitments on that list as of right now, and that's tied for the most they've ever had, tied with the 2015 and 2019 classes. And that 2019 class is a big reason we're sitting here talking about an 8-4 and four team getting ready to play in the Outback Bowl because that included <laughs> K.J. Jefferson, Traylon Burks, Trey Knox, who's you know come on uh, strong as a tight end. Jalen Catalan was in that group. So uh, recruiting matters and getting – as many good players as you can uh, will eventually pay off because some of them will will pan out and, and be a KJ Jefferson and Traylon Burks. So uh, really good at the top. The class itself is pretty much filled out. I think they're at 20 right now. Uh, they can sign up to 21 uh, without anything else happening than, than to get those seven extra scholarships that the NCAA just recently passed. They've got to have some guys transfer out. However, they have to enter the portal on or after December 15th. Why that's the rule, I don't know, <laughs> other than the fact that the NCAA is not exactly the smartest organization in the world. Uh, so This just in, like, <laughs> stop traffic, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, And plus, you know, you've got, you know, Hazelwood counts toward that number. Uh, you've got some guys like, you know, say a, a Sam, Sam Bakke is how you pronounce his name. He's a, a high three-star wide receiver from Georgia. I feel really good about Arkansas's chances with him. He's going to announce on December 15th, kind of give us some signing day drama and excitement. And then they're still looking at, you know, maybe a couple of guys trying to flip them. I mean, there's a, a corner that's committed to, to LSU, LaTerrence Welch. He's a top top 150 guy, four-star, high four-star guy. Uh, Gentry Williams, he's committed to Oklahoma. Uh, I would be surprised if they're able to flip him. Uh, just because you know Oklahoma went and hired Brent Venables, a, a defensive-minded coach, and, and Gentry Williams is a defensive back. So, but they're still trying. They're they're giving their best effort to flip those guys, and and who knows? Maybe there's a surprise or two either out of the portal or or someone else pops up on signing day that that we didn't expect. That happened last year. Uh, I think that happened the last couple of years. Uh, so it, we'll we'll see how it all plays out. But I would say if you're an Arkansas fan, you got to be really encouraged to have this kind of class, and it's it's even going to get better moving forward because the 2023 class is where you're really going to see the impact of this, uh, the successful season they had where they're going to you know, attract maybe more higher caliber recruits and things of that nature. Well, Andrew, it's always good to talk with you and appreciate you hopping on again. If you want to follow him on Twitter, folks, he's a great follow at NWA Hutch. You can also follow his work and the great work that they do over at hogbeat.com. Hutch, appreciate it, man. Enjoy it. I guess we'll be seeing you down in Tampa, man. It's, I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait.